Hi everyone, in this video I will discuss about ZOR linked list. So in ordinary doubly linked list like we have seen, each node requires two address fields to store the address of the previous and the next nodes. Now ZOR linked list is basically a memory efficient version of doubly linked list which can be created by using only one space of address field along with every node. So instead of having two address space, we are having only one address space and based on some manipulations, we can traverse in the forward direction as well as in the backward direction. So in one address space, we are storing the address of both previous and next. So to do that, we make use of ZOR operation. So each node store the ZOR of addresses of the previous and next nodes. So this is a normal doubly linked list. So we can see here that each node has two pointers. One is the previous pointer and the other next pointer. And in ZOR linked list or memory efficient doubly linked list. So each node has only one pointer. So this pointer has the ZOR of previous and next. So by using only one address space, we are saving some memory. So that is why it is called memory efficient doubly linked list. Now let's understand how can we create a ZOR linked list and how we can traverse it. Now before we go into detail how the ZOR of addresses take place, Let's rewind our memory on what is a ZOR operation. So you must have studied in your college the bitwise operators like we have OR and NOT and ZOR. So if we have two bits, let's say X and Y, if X is 0, Y is 0, then the ZOR operation will give us 0. Similarly, if X is 1, Y is 1, then ZOR operation will again give us 0. If they are different, then it will give 1. So which means that ZOR operation for same gives 0. Because if X and Y both are 0, it gives output as 0. And if X and Y both are 1, it gives output as 0. So we are using this property of ZOR to create the ZOR linked list. So let's see how this is applicable. First, let's understand how to create these pointers in each of the node of the linked list. So I will name these pointers as npx, which is basically ZOR of next and previous. Now for npx of A, which is basically this pointer, will ZOR the previous and the next. So the previous is null and the next is address of B. So npx of A is null ZOR address of B. Similarly, NPX of B is address of A and address of C. So the ZOR of previous and next will give us the NPX pointer. Similarly, NPX of D is address of C, ZOR address of E. And NPX of E is address of D, ZOR null. So by this way, we calculate the NPX pointers for each of the nodes. So once we have calculated the NPX pointers for each of the node, let's see how we can use those pointers to go in the forward direction or in the reverse direction. So if we are at location C and we want to go in the forward direction to node D. So to find address of D, we can use NPX C or address of B. Now how this works is, so NPX C is address of B or address of D. So let's replace NPX C by address of B or address of D and then we have or address of D. Now we have seen that when we do or operation for same bits we get 0. So here we have address of B and at the end again we have address of B. So these will give us 0. So we do ZOR with D. 
So this operation zeros or address of D will give us address of D. So this means that NPX C or address of B gives us address of D. If we want to go in the reverse direction, so we want to find the address of B. So if we want to go to the previous node, we'll make use of the current node and the next node. So to find address of B, we'll use NPX C or address of D. So NPX C is address of B or address of D. So now we have two address of D's. So these will be resolved to zero and we will be left with address of B. So to go to the previous node, we make use of the NPX of the current pointer and the address of the next node. And to go to the next node, we make use of the NPX of the current node and the ZOR of the previous node. So by doing these ZOR operations, we can traverse both to the next node and to the previous node. Now, once you've understood how this ZOR linked list works, let's see what are the disadvantages of using this ZOR linked list. So this method of creating a ZOR linked list is not very common because it has few drawbacks. So one of the drawbacks is that it is slightly complex to code and maintain. Because in linked list, we do a lot of operations to traverse in the forward direction or in the reverse directions. And here, whenever we want to do that, we have to do ZOR operations. So it becomes slightly complex to code and it is error prone also because we have to do ZOR operations. So it is tough to maintain also. And the second problem here is that if we are given a pointer to an existing middle node in the ZOR linked list, we can't delete that node from the list or insert a new node before or after it. Let's say we are only given a pointer to node C. Now the problem here is that if we want to go in the forward direction, we want to go to D, then we need address of B also. Because to calculate address of D, we'll use NPX C ZOR address of B. But if you want to go to B, we'll use NPX C ZOR address of D. So we need to know the address of at least the previous or the next node, only then we can do the traversal. But let's say in a problem, we are only given a pointer to a middle node of the linked list, then this is not possible because we won't have the addresses of the B or D node. So in that case, we cannot delete that node from the list or insert a new node before or after it. So that is also one of the drawbacks of using this ZOR linked list. And the third drawback that is here is that here we are doing ZOR of addresses. So this operation of doing ZOR of addresses is not supported in few of the programming languages. So that is also one of the reasons that it is not very popular form of linked list. Now this is good to know from an interview point of perspective or a theoretical point of perspective because one can ask you that how we can make a doubly linked list more efficient. But when it comes to real life applications or the applications in the software industry, this is not very frequently used. Now once you've understood the logic and the drawbacks, let's see how we can implement this. So all the code that I'll be showing is available in my GitHub repository link of which is present here and as well as in the description. Now let's have a look at the code. So the structure of this linked list node is we have a char value which will represent the value in the node and an npx pointer which will basically be the ZOR of the previous and the next. Now in the main function I create the linked list which I've shown on the left side. So I call this function insert at beginning I pass it the head pointer and the value to insert. So in this function insert at beginning, first I create the new linked list node. Because I'm inserting at the beginning, so I compute the npx pointer for head as the ZOR of the npx of head and the new node. So I have this utility function ZOR in which I calculate the ZOR of the two addresses that I'm passing to it. So to compute the ZOR of the addresses, I convert them into int pointer and then I find out the ZOR. So once all the nodes are inserted, then I call two functions traverse forward and traverse backward. 
to traverse forward, I pass it the head of the linked list. In this function, traverse forward, I keep two variables, previous and current. Because I'm traversing from the head, so previous is null and current is the starting node, which is at A. So in this while loop, I print the value of current and to go to the next node, I do the ZOR of the current node NPX and the previous node. So now I have the pointer to the next node. So I adjust previous and current and then in the next iteration, I again print the current value. So this will print me the link list starting from the head to the end. And then in the main, I'm calling this function traverse backward in which I pass the last node of the link list. So I'm passing it the pointer to the node E. So in this traverse backward, I again have two pointers, next and current. So since this is the last node, next is null and current is the pointer to E. So to traverse in the backward direction, I need to do the ZOR of the current pointer and the next pointer. So once I calculate the pointer to the previous node, I adjust the next and current and then I again print the current in the next iteration. So this will print me the link list starting from E and till A. Now let's see the output of this program. So when I print the link list in the forward direction, I get A, B, C, D, E. And when I print in the backward direction, I get E, D, C, B, A. So by using only one pointer in the link list node, I'm able to traverse both in the forward direction and as well as in the backward direction. So like I mentioned that this is more of a theoretical concept and it's good to know from an interview perspective. If you have any doubts or suggestions, please leave in the comment section below. So that was all for this video. If you like my content, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. It really motivates me to make more such content. And until next time, this is Sandeep Thapar signing off.